All right, in this video here, we're gonna be talking about how to solve trigonometric equations. Now, a trigonometric equation is an equation that involves a trigonometric function uh, where the variable is inside the trig function, right? So an example, sine of theta equals one half, right? My variable theta is inside the sine function, which is one of the trigonometric functions. And so this is what we would call a trigonometric equation. And this is about as simple as a trigonometric equation could be. Um, so we'll do this example and we'll, I'll do another one, at least one more on this video. And then I'll do some other videos where I do more complicated examples of solving trigonometric equations. Now, when we solve a trigonometric equation, the, the key thing is we want to find all the values of the variable that make the equation true, right? Just like with any other type of equation. Um, now, for, for most types of equations, that's not that hard to do. Like for a linear equation, when we solve it, well, there's only one value of the variable that makes a linear equation true. Or right? if I have a quadratic equation with an x to the second power, well, then we, we might have two values of the variable that make the equation true. So we might have two solutions. Um, you know, exponential equations, logarithmic equations, generally we get one solution to those. Every once in a while we'll get more than one, but usually just one. For trigonomet trigonometric equations, uh, generally, we get an infinite number of solutions, right? Especially, well, for, for all of this, the, the trig functions, remember that they're periodic, like the sine function keeps going like this, like it's a wave that keeps going up and down between positive one and negative one. So if I wanna know where the sine of theta equals one half, well, everywhere that y equals one half on that graph is a solution to that equation. And since that graph keeps going up and down and, and it passes one half every time on the way up and every time on the way down, there's gonna be an infinite number of solutions to this equation, right? So what we do when we solve a trig equation like this is first we look for all the solutions in one period, like from zero to two pi, right? Because the period of the sine function um, is two pi. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I would advise you to go back and watch some of the videos I did about uh, the definitions of the trig functions and the graphs of like the sine and cosine functions where we talk about that stuff in more detail. But, but the period of the sine function is two pi, right? If I graph the sine function, it starts at, let me actually draw a graph rather than doing all this stupid stuff with my hands, right? It starts at the origin, it goes up, it comes back down, and it goes back. You know, it starts here at zero, you know, it comes back here at pi, and then by two pi, that completes one full period, and then it starts the whole thing over again, and it does both of those things, it, it does it in both directions forever, right? Um, so this is one period of the sine function from zero to two pi. Right, so what I do is I look for all the solutions to this equation in that one period, just between zero and two pi. You know, how many solutions do I have? Usually for the trig functions, we get two solutions in that one period, right? If I'm looking for where this is equal to one half, right? Remember the maximum point for sine is one, the minimum point is negative one. So one half, well, there's gonna be an answer here and there's gonna be an answer there, right? Where my, my function value is equal to one half. Right? And generally that's the case with, with trig functions. Usually in that one period, you get two solutions. The exception to that is like if it's like sine theta equals one, well then there's only one solution to that in the, in the one period. If it was equal to negative one, then there's only one solution to that because there's only one place where that, that graph hits and neg y equals negative one. Right? But for any values between negative one and positive one, you're gonna get two solutions in that one period. Right? So we look for those two solutions and then what we do is we just we, we, there's like a way we phrase it to, to cover all of the possible solutions, um, which uh, when we find the solutions, I'll show you what that method is. We don't actually have to find every single value, you know, for every period of this graph, every time this graph hits y equals one half, because there's an infinite number of them, so we can't possibly list them all. Uh, so there's like a shorthand way of, of writing how to like, how to cover all of those infinite possibilities. As long as we know the two solutions in the first period, we, we can cover all the solutions in the other period just by writing it a certain way. All right, so I'll show you that kind of at the end of this example here. All right, so sine of theta equals one half. I need to find all the solutions to that in the first period of the uh, sine function between zero and two pi. Well, if I'm solving the trig equation, I have to use the inverse trig, trig function to make that happen. All right, so I do sine inverse on both sides Right, the sine inverse cancels out the sine function and I get theta equals sine inverse of one half. All right now, when you're solving a simple trig equation like this, you don't really have to go through all those steps. You just have to think of, you know, think of your unit circle definition of the trig functions. Sine of, of a, the angle gives you the y coordinate of your terminal point. And you can use your trig hand, right? If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the trig hand and with the unit circle, again, go back and watch those videos I did on, on unit circle and trig hand. Um, but without even doing all this, sine theta equals one half. All right, sine is the y coordinate. If I put down my ring finger, 
Now my X would be root three over two, that's the number of fingers above. My Y, the number of fingers below the one I put down, is one half. All right, so sine theta equals one half when theta is equal to this finger here, which is pi over six. Right, so at this point, if you've been studying trigonometry and, and you're, before you start solving trig equations, you should have done a lot of work with trigonometry before this point. Um, you know, it's expected that you would know that sine of theta equals one half when theta is equal to pi over six. Right, and when we're solving trig equations, generally we give our answers in the radian measures, not in the degree measures, unless we're specifically asked for degrees. All right, so I get theta equals pi over six. All right, so that corresponds to, you know, on the unit circle. You know, for the angle pi over six, the terminal point is root three over two comma one half, which again, I can get that from my trig hand. You know, the ring finger corresponds to pi over six. Number of fingers above is the X, that's root three over two. Fingers below is the Y, that's root one or just one over two, All right? And the sine is my Y coordinate. So at pi over six, sine of theta equals one half. All right, so sine of pi over six equals one half. All right, so. No, that, that's just one solution, though, right? Remember, when I drew that graph up here a couple minutes ago, there were two points on that graph where the graph hit the y value of one half, right? And there's going to be another point on the unit circle where I have a y coordinate of one half, right? If I reflect this point over into the second quadrant, that point is going to have the terminal point negative root three over two, positive one half, right? I want sine, which is my y coordinate, equal to positive one half. Well, the y coordinates are positive in the first and second quadrants, right? So I can get the one from my first quadrant using my trig hand pretty easily. And then I just have to figure out, well, which other quadrant am I going to have that same result? If it's a positive y value, that's also going to happen over here in the second quadrant um, at negative root three over two comma one half, right? And then the question is, well, what angle is that that takes me over to here, All right? Remember, half of a circle is pi, and th this one over here was pi over six. All right, so this one over here is also pi over six, less than pi, All right? So if I do pi minus pi over six, that's gonna give me five pi over six for theta, All right? So that, that, you know, that last angle that we have in the second quadrant before we get all the way over to the negative x-axis, that angle is five pi over six, All right? And again, I, I did a video a while back where I talked about the unit circle and how to know what all those pi numbers are for any point along the circle and how to figure out what they are. Um, so if you're not able to look at this and figure out that that point over there corresponds to five pi over six, you know, check out that other video I did where I kind of explain like the, the patterns and the, the little things you can look for to figure out, you know, what all those points are in terms of those, those pi numbers, those radian measures. All right, but you know, the, the quick way is, you know, if this is a pi over six number over here, the corresponding one in any other quadrant is also gonna be a pi over six number. The question is, what's the numerator? If it's in the second quadrant, it's a little bit less than one whole. So it's five over six is what's a little bit less than one whole, five sixths of pi, right? That's the, the, the one that's right here, just before you get to pi, it's just less than one full pi, right? Six over six would be one pi, which is over here. All right, so that's just a quick explanation of how that works. But again, I did another video where I explained that in a lot more detail, so you might want to go back and check that one out there. Um, but when you're solving these trig equations, you know, all the other things you learned about trigonometry, the definitions of the trig functions, the unit circle, um, you know, how to reflect the points and get those terminal values and how to use your trig hand, all those things come into play when you're solving these problems, right? And then the last thing for this, right, so these are, are my, my two solutions in one period, right, between zero and two pi, right, one trip around the, the unit circle. These are the only two points on the unit circle where the y coordinate equals one half, right? If I go down in the second or the, the third or fourth quadrants, you know, I have negative y values, so the, I'm not going to get any solutions down there, only these two in the first and second quadrants. And we can see when I draw that horizontal line at y equals one half, well, it only hits the circle two times. And these are the two angles where it hits the circle, right? So I know I have my two solutions in the one period, right? But remember what we said before, right? When I draw the graph of the sine function, or if I keep going around the unit circle multiple times, you know, every time I come back around to this right here, and I do the sine of that angle, it's going to give me one half every time. You know, I can do, you know, 17 laps around the unit circle, and then come back up to here, and the sine of that angle is going to be one half, right? So the way I you know, denote that, you know, see, this is, this is all the solutions in one period. 
right? That's from zero to two pi, right? To get all the solutions, the little notation thing that I do to, to denote every possible solution is I take these angles, so it's theta equals pi over six, and I put plus two pi k, and theta equals five pi over six plus two pi k. All right, that two pi k, k here represents any integer, right? So remember, integers are positive and negative whole numbers. So you know, zero, one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, right? And those integers are multiplying two pi. So the two pi represents another uh, period, another trip around the unit circle. So if I go to pi over six, and then I add to that a two pi, well, that takes me back to the same spot. If I add another two pi, or if I do two pi in the negative direction, you know, every time I add or subtract another two pi from this pi over six, I end up at the same terminal point, and the sine of that angle is still gonna be one half. Right, same for five pi over six. If I, if I go to here, five pi over six, and then I add or subtract two pi, however many times I do it, any multiple of two pi in either direction, positive or negative, I end up at the same point, and the sine of that angle is still gonna be one half. Right, so this is how we represent all the solutions to trigonometric equations. Um, we first find all the solutions in one period, right, and then, we just, you know, whatever those solutions are, for, for the sine and cosine functions where the period is two pi, we just take our solutions from the first period and just add two pi k to each one, and then that represents every possible solution of the infinite number of solutions that we could have. All right, um, so that's our first example here. I'm gonna pause this real quick, and we'll put up another example that we'll somehow do in about three minutes, so check this out. All right, so I put up here the next example, and I also did a, most of the work for it, just so I can kind of talk my way through it without having you, you know, watch me sit here and, and write all this stuff down. So the next equation we have is cosine of theta equals 0 0.65. Right, so just like that last one, um, to cancel out the cosine, I do cosine inverse on both sides of the equation. Right, on the left side, the cosine inverse cancels out the cosine, so I get theta equals cosine inverse of 0 0.65. Now, unlike that last one where I had... Um, you know, sine inverse of one half, and one half is one of the numbers that I could get from my trig hand on the unit circle. 0 0.65 is not one of the numbers that shows up on my trig hand, so in that case, I need to use my calculator to do this. All right, so I have to put into my calculator cosine inverse of 0 0.65, and when I do that, I get 0 0.86. Now, my calculator here is in radian mode. Remember what I said a little while back? Um, when you're solving these trig equations, generally you have to give your answers in radians. So make, before you type this in your calculator, make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Um, and then we get that theta is equal to 0.86 radians. Right Now, that's one solution. Remember, our, our calculators, when we're doing those inverse trig functions, only give us one of the solutions. Uh, we have to find the other solution that's in one, uh, one period between 0 and 2 pi. Right, so... 0.86 radians is going to be up here with the x coordinate equals 0 0.65, right? Because number cosine gives me my x coordinate of my terminal point, right? So if x equals positive 0 0.65, the other place where I'm going to get an x coordinate of positive 0 0.65 is going to be down in the fourth quadrant, right? In the fourth quadrant, x is positive, but y is negative. So down here, I'm also going to have x equals 0 0.65. And if this angle here is 0.86 radians above 0, well, this one down here is going to be 0.86 radians below 2 pi, right? 2 pi is one full uh, lap around the circle, but I'm stopping 0.86 short of that. So now I have to do 2 pi minus 0.86, right? So it's 2 pi minus 0.86, and I get 5.42 approximately, right? So again, this goes back to things that we did previously. If you watch some of the other videos that I did on trigonometry, um, You'll, you'll notice that, that we've done similar things to this before, all right? Um, so, you know, go back and watch those other videos if you're not sure how I got this 5.42, but it's just using the symmetry, right? 0.86 above, 0.86 below, that's 2 pi minus 0.86. So these are my two solutions in radians in one lap around the unit circle. To get all the solutions, I do theta equals 0.86 plus 2 pi k, and I do theta equals 5.42 plus 2 pi k. Right, whatever answers I get from that first uh, from that first period, I just add two pi k to each of those, and then that covers every solution possible. You know, no matter how many times I go around the unit circle in whichever direction, um, this covers every possible solution. 
All right, so that's how we can solve these trig equations when we have to use a calculator. Now I'm gonna do some other videos where I do more complicated types of trig equations. So make sure you check out those other videos that I'm about to do uh, to see some more complicated ones.